she's about the closest thing you can be to a British royal without actually being a British royal. This is the true story of Prince Philip's best friend, Penelope Natchbull. Born in London on April 16, 1953, Penelope Natchbull is the only daughter of Reginald and Marion Eastwood. While not among the nobility, the Eastwoods did have a claim to a certain position in British culture. Reginald, a one-time butcher, was the founder of the restaurant chain Aberdeen Steakhouse, which later became known as Angus Steakhouse. The signature decor of the restaurants consisted of atmospheric lighting over red velour banquettes, which held an opulent appeal for diners who remembered a time of rationing during World War II. Natchbull split her youth between Great Britain and Switzerland. The steakhouse was eventually sold, and its traded owners over the decades. The menu and style became stagnant, and the quality of the food has reportedly declined. Restaurant critics from The Telegraph to The Guardian have taken shots at its reputation. Only a handful of locations remain open, and the chain's future looks quite precarious. Penelope Natchbull was still Penelope Eastwood when she first met the royal family in 1974, and she reportedly made a good impression from the start. She and Prince Philip forged a connection over their mutual love for the outdoors and horses. But the full blossoming of friendship between the prince and Natchbull didn't happen until 1991. That was the year that Natchbull's five-year-old daughter, Leonora, died of cancer. Philip then took the devastated mother under his wing. He began inviting her on carriage rides and later taught her carriage driving. Daisies. Or Leonora. Carriage driving is a sport in which one driver steers a carriage drawn by one, two, or four horses with three tests of skill and speed. Philip helped to popularize the sport in the United Kingdom, and Natchbull's embrace of it reportedly kept him involved in competitions into his 90s. The Prince and Natchbull also shared an enthusiasm for races of another kind in the form of mini motorbikes. It's more than friendship that Penelope Natchbull shared with Prince Philip, as she's kin to the royal family by marriage. In 1979, she married Norton Natchbull, Philip's godson and King Charles III's second cousin. Norton is also the grandson of Louis Mountbatten, 1st Earl Mountbatten of Burma, who was Philip's uncle. Mountbatten was a strong influence on the future King Charles III, who reportedly dubbed his great-uncle an honorary grandfather, according to The Prince of Wales, a biography by Jonathan Dimbleby. Before Mountbatten was assassinated by the Irish Republican Army, he was trying to arrange a marriage between Charles and Norton's sister Amanda. That bit of matchmaking didn't quite work out, but Mountbatten was also supportive of Penelope entering the family. Her wedding was held mere months after the assassination assassination and was attended by the Queen and Prince Philip, Prince Charles, and other assorted royals. The newlyweds inherited Mountbatten's home of Broadlands in Hampshire. As seen in a photo from 1975, Penelope Natchbull was quite friendly with Prince Charles, shortly after her first introduction to the royal family, and there was speculation that they may have been more than friends. The story later shifted, though, with Charles supposedly being the smokescreen that kept prying Penelope's eyes away from her romance with Norton Natchbull. Norton and his cousin Charles both attended Gordonston Boarding School, and Charles was the best man when Penelope and Norton married. The tabloids haven't left Charles and Penelope alone in the years since the wedding. The Sun, for example, repeated rumors that the two old friends were estranged after a confidant of Charles put in his ear that Penelope and Philip were having an affair. Nevertheless, the two have continued to be present in each other's lives. Charles is close to the Natchbull's children, and according to the Prince of Wales, a biography, they were some of his only friends to warn him against his marriage to Diana Spencer. I refuse to be blamed any longer for this grotesque misalliance! To her friends, Penelope Natchbull is known as Penny, but to Palace staff, she had another nickname, and also. In 2021, an anonymous aide told the Daily Mail that when they drew up a guest list for a family function, private or public, big or small, Prince Philip would review the invitations and inevitably say, and also Penny. And it's not just the tabloids that have mentioned this nickname. The biography Prince Philip revealed, a man of his century, notes that Queen Elizabeth 
shared Philip's fondness for Natchbull and was just as keen to have her included. During Philip's funeral in 2021, Natchbull and the prince's private secretary were the only non-family members in attendance. In happier times, she could be seen on the balcony of Buckingham Palace alongside the royal family, waving at the crowds and taking in the trooping of the color, and she's also often been seen at the Royal Windsor Horse Show as a guest of the family. Over the course of their marriage, Penelope and Norton Natchbull have had three children together, Nicholas, Alexandra, and Leonora. Leonora sadly passed away from cancer at the age of five. She was buried on the grounds of Broadlands, the family estate, and Penelope later established the Leonora Children's Cancer Fund. The surviving Natchbull children have their own connections to the royal family. King Charles III is a godfather to Nicholas, and he gave Alexandra away at her wedding to Thomas Hooper in 2016, as Norton was reportedly too ill at the time. Nicholas is in line to inherit the wealth of the Mountbatten family and his father's titles, but he was reportedly once in danger of being disinherited. As reported by the Daily Mail, he has a history of addiction to crack and heroin. His drug issues made his family question his future, but he eventually kicked his habits and worked to repair his relationship with his father. His own first child was born in June 2022. Penelope Natchbull's constant presence at Prince Philip's side from the 1990s onward was pretty much guaranteed to lead to rumors. It wasn't the only time that the prince endured accusations of infidelity. Netflix's The Crown has exploited that chatter more than once. And the fifth season even featured him discussing his marital woes with Natchbull. As his biographer Ingrid Seward told The Sun in 2022, Philip always was a flirt. But, according to Dickie Arbiter, Queen Elizabeth's former press secretary, there was nothing to the story. Natchbull was a friend to all the royal family, not just Philip. And insinuating otherwise so soon after the Queen's death was clearly in poor taste. For their part, Natchbull and the royals gave no public credence to the rumors. When he was asked about allegations of affairs, Philip would snap at the press. According to The Independent, he once declared to one journalist, Good God, woman, have you ever stopped to think that for years I have never moved anywhere without a policeman accompanying me? So how the hell could I get away with anything like that? The clarity of that permanence felt so reassuring. It still does. There may be no significant evidence of an affair between Penelope Natchbull and Prince Philip. However, it is a matter of public record that her own marriage was marred by infidelity. In 2010, Norton Natchbull left his family home to live with his mistress, Lady Natal, in the Bahamas. The Daily Mail published photos of the two of them strolling through the capital of Nassau. However, despite their estrangement, Penelope and Norton remained married. Norton eventually seemed to have a change of heart, as he reported reportedly returned home in 2014. Initially, that meant a stable block on the estate, but after a few years, he was reportedly allowed back in Broadlands proper. One mitigating factor may have been his declining health. He reportedly suffers from Alzheimer's disease and has to delegate titles and management of his estates to Penelope. Queen Elizabeth II's feelings on nearly everything were quite opaque. She gave few interviews and never aired her family's dirty laundry in public. So it's possible that she harbored resentment about the nature of her husband's friendship with Penelope Natchbull, or that she was upset by other rumors of infidelity. But that would be mere speculation, as there's no actual evidence that she felt that way. As Ingrid Seward explained to The Sun, the queen was sufficiently aware and presumably comfortable with her husband's flirtatious tendencies to joke about them. As for Natchbull and the Queen's relationship, biographers, employees, friends, and even the tabloids observed that the two ladies were genuine friends. According to The Express, Elizabeth was impressed by how well Natchbull handled both the death of her daughter, Leonora, and her husband's affair. And Ingrid Seward made sure to note the monarch's affection in her book, Prince Philip Revealed. But our streets are not empty. They are filled with the love and the care that we have for each other. In 2017, Prince Philip retired from public life, reportedly joking at the time that he had to stand down as he wouldn't be standing up for much longer. He withdrew to a five-bedroom home on the Royal Sandringham Estate, known as Wood Farm. He was only seen by the members of his family, and also Penny. 
As reported by The Sun, she remained one of the few non-relatives to regularly visit the prince after his retirement. Besides keeping in touch with her old friend, Natchbull reportedly played a key part in an embarrassing public episode of his retired life. When he got into a car accident in 2019, Elizabeth decided that her husband needed to give up driving. And so, as Ingrid Seward told The Sun, the queen dispatched Natchbull to carry out the difficult task of convincing the prince to surrender his license. However testy that conversation may have been, Natchbull remained a visitor to Wood Farm until Philip's death in 2021. The following year, she was a guest of the Queen at the Royal Windsor Horse Show, which she had so often attended with Philip. Due to her husband Norton's declining health, Penelope Natchbull has had to assume some of his responsibilities to the family's holdings. She has reportedly taken over management of the Mountbatten fortune, and she's also handled some ceremonial duties related to her husband's titles. Norton, who is also known as Lord Romsey, inherited the ceremonial office of High Steward of Romsey in 1979, along with the Broadlands estate outside the town centre. But when he removed himself to the Bahamas in 2010, he relinquished the job, which largely consists of presiding over local functions in ceremonial dress. Penelope was invited to take over as high steward by the town council. By accepting, she was automatically in the post, though a formal induction ceremony was also held in 2011. As reported by the Hampshire Chronicle, Penelope, who is known affectionately as Lady Penny in Romsey, pledged loyal service to the community. It was also noted that she would attend the coming wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton, not only as a guest, but also as a representative of Romsey. Penelope Natchbull has enjoyed quite the decades-long connection to the British royal family. In addition to her long-term friendship with Prince Philip and her husband Norton being Philip's godson and a grandson of Philip's uncle Louis Mountbatten, there's also the royal matter of their house. Broadlands, the Romsey estate the Natchbulls call home, dates back to before the 11th century and was once part of the local abbey. Presumably your children will grow up to, to this as well, hopefully. Indeed. If they survive the water, yes. <laughs> the estate traded hands among the nobility for centuries until Mountbatten acquired it through marriage. In 1947, he opened his house to Queen Elizabeth II and Philip during their honeymoon. The couple revisited the estate in 2007 and recreated one of the photos from that time for their 60th wedding anniversary. The Queen and Prince Consort weren't the only royal couple to visit Broadlands over the years. In 1981, when it was in the hands of the Natchbulls, Prince Charles and Princess Diana spent the first part of their honeymoon there, and they also opened the Mountbatten exhibition on the estate. 